Hello and welcome. You're listening to the Tasty Tidbits Podcast. Get ready to receive rich, well-seasoned, and tasteful tidbits to transform your life. Each week, Dr. Tiffany comes to you with inspirational encouragement and thought-provoking interviews to help you revolutionize your walk with God. Are you hungry for more of His presence? Then get ready. And now, your host, pastor, author, and motivational speaker, Dr. Tiffany Watkins. Hello, everyone, and welcome again to Tasty Tidbits. I am your host, Dr. Tiffany Watkins, and I'm so excited to have you here again on another episode. Well, I'm excited today because we have a very special guest, and we're going to talk about a very important subject about how to forgive the unforgivable. And we know that there are many things that are going on in the world today uh, with our relationships with people that we deal with that sometimes it's challenging to be able to forgive. But we have Dr. Bill Sr. here today who's going to talk to us about being able to forgive the unforgivable. And so how are you doing today? Dr. I'm Bill? good. I'm good. Thank you. Beautiful sky here in Denver. Uh, family's healthy. We're good. We're good. good. Post COVID, you know. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I'm gonna let the listeners know a little bit about you and then I'll let you let them know a little bit about yourself and we'll get Thank started. You. So t- I want to tell you, audience, today that Dr. Bill is a senior pastor. He's experienced pastor, disciple, church revitalization specialist. He's a lecturer, a conference speaker with over 25 years of local church pastoring. Um, he is also the author of 12 books uh, and two online experiential paths to help people who struggle with identity relationships, shame, addiction, loneliness, and forgiveness. And he's going to talk to us a little bit more about that um, before we end the show today. But thanks again for being on the show again today, Bill. And would you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Yeah, it's such a pleasure to be here. By the way, we have a third online for parents because you kind of ball all of those things together and Christian parents are going, I can't do this. There, there's such <laughs> shame and failure right now. So uh, yeah, we're, we're launching a beta test even starting next week. Awesome, awesome. Oh, good enough parenting is fun. It's shame-free. Anyway, enough about that. <laughs> Forgiveness. Um, yeah, so, um, so I did my graduate's work on forgiveness. I actually was... I visited Israel and spoke to Palestinians and Israelis and and just went, you know what, we really could be doing better than this. A political solution is just going to be really hard to find because these are deeply entrenched cultural, uh, uh, extensive uh, wounds. And so I started really focusing on, is there anything we Christians can bring to the table? Because there's still a lot of Christians there who, who are in that dialogue. And then I came back and as a pastor, started a church in the Vancouver, Canada area, and God flooded my church. It really is almost God's warped sense of humor. And, and funny, he, he flooded my church with rape victims. It wasn't like we advertised. Um, and it wasn't like, it, it wasn't what I was preaching necessarily. It was just God had something in mind and the more i taught and preached and counseled pastorally these poor men and women by the way who had been abused and uh uh, sexually abused uh it not only was what i was teaching them based upon the stuff i was taught in seminary not only was it uh harmful it was disastrous one lady picked up a chair in the middle of a sermon on the love of god threw it through the wall and stormed out Oh, wow. Yeah. And my elders, the the leaders of the church basically said, Bill, I don't know what happened here, but that doesn't look biblical to me. So you need to work this out. (laughs) And uh, so this was a 10 year process of learning biblically what forgiveness is about. And I have to tell you, Dr. Tiffany, I think we Christians have just dropped the ball on this one. We could be doing so, so, so much better. Not perfectly. That's heaven. But Mm -hmm, oh, my gosh, mm -hmm, we should mm -hmm. be leading the pack and we're not. That's so true. 
That is so true. And, um, you know, I was thinking about what you said about, you know, it's funny how the Lord does things. You were ministering to a lot of rape victims and that's how it started out. I yeah. did um, uh, some time with the rape victims at the Rape Crisis Center and I would yeah. call and have to go in and, you know, they've experienced so much trauma and so much hurt and have to go through that healing process. And so yes. God knows how to do what he does and for you to be able to extend out from that doing um, right. being able to forgive that's an amazing thing you know right. and it's it's so easy to be hurt you know even through sexual abuse you know because I experienced yes. that as a young age did you? and uh, yeah I did and it was actually in the church and so I had to many people oh would ask gosh. me yeah many people would ask me how did you get through that because I was young yeah. then I'm probably yeah, yeah, like yeah. 16 yep. 14 16 oh you were a teenager oh my yes, goodness yes yes by an older adult and and but I, I I always loved the Lord and I felt like you know Lord you know I can't let one person be the reason why I don't serve you and I had that right. at a young age and uh, I've been able to help a lot of people that have gone yeah, through yeah, that yeah. you know since then yeah see I know in, in conversations like this and you do too what uh, there's probably listeners who have been here heard this and they heard your story just now and just triggered mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know that's right. the way those tra- traumatic events that go deep into our midbrain, into the hippocampus. They just sit there ready. It's like an IED and they they explode, particularly if they've been unresolved. Right. Or if the person has been told, well, you just need to forgive and move on. I mean, I, nobody says that that directly, but indirectly, that is kind of what we say. Mm-hmm. You just need mm-hmm. to choose to forgive, choose to give up your right of justice, choose to forgive up apologies. By, by the way, choose to give up voice. You can't talk to the person or talk about it. Uh, you just need to avoid it. Don't ruminate over it and move on in Christ. And I'm telling you, our brains were not designed by our creator to do that. Right, right. And, you know, you you have to have it, it's, it's a process. It's a process. And I, I don't think a lot of people understand that it's a process of healing that takes place mm-hmm. that you have to be able to go mm-hmm. through. Um, yep. And so yep. you're right. A lot of people, when they haven't experienced it, they may say, just move on. And, and it's not just oh, that my. easy. It's not oh, that easy. You know, um, yep. and, and we got to learn that there is a process, you know, and it's so easy to be hurt by others that you find yourself not being able to forgive, you know. Oh. Um, so let's talk about some types of offenses that cause people not to forgive, Bill. Oh, my. Oh, my. I mean, so, so it's anything. Uh, anything can be a, a, a d- act of disrespect or betrayal or being overlooked or, or touched or abused or, or lied to. There's just, I mean, almost anything we can do, particularly now in, in our in our woke culture, there is it just seems like we highlight people's offenses against us and we focus on us. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not critiquing that at this point. We, we could have another talk about that. <laughs> right. But, uh, but, but right. people are just offended by so, so, so many things and we haven't equipped them how to process the little ones or the or the big ones and it's causing relational shame identity shame it's causing it's actually tending towards drug addiction particularly opioids just to get rid of the pain mm-hmm. um it's causing i mean you know it's got heart disease and and uh, all kind of things related to unforgiveness but on the flip side if we handle forgiving wrong poorly badly if we force people into it without the process without actually the holy spirit we can actually cause huge identity shame that will affect them relationally this this lady that picked up the chair and threw through the thing through a window she was a newlywed and her abuse had been as a uh, as an adolescent uh, in a foreign country, nobody, you know, she's never going to see that person again. She was told to forgive and move on. They moved to, to Canada. So uh, she buried it just like a good Christian. Um, but she got married and I even did premarital counseling for them and nothing flagged, nothing came up. Mm-hmm. Uh, but on their wedding night, she started having uh, massive headaches and, and then she wouldn't let her, her new husband even touch her. Right. Mm-hmm. All of these mm-hmm. All of these were strange. She wasn't sure what was going on. She felt ashamed of it, but but migraines. And then she came back and just migraine after migraine after migraine. And so it wasn't unforgiveness that was affecting this. It was bad forgiveness that affected these things. Oh, wow. Explain that a little bit more, Bill, about bad forgiveness. Well, for her, the trigger was a sexual touch. Okay. And, yeah. and there was a dirtiness mm-hmm. to that. There was a, a shame to that that hadn't been dealt with. 
Um, so even as an adolescent, right, in her brain, she had let somebody uh, abuse her. She had not done anything about it. She was she was an object, right? So mm-hmm, even mm-hmm. in the arms of someone she dearly loved, that came bubbling up and she couldn't stop it. It's part of the midbrain, not the prefrontal cortex where we're being reasonable. It's yeah. actually in the midbrain back where the memories are stored, the hippocampus, where our brain was designed to actually store the the event along with a powerful emotion. Mm-hmm. And in this case, unresolved emotion. And, and, it, and it just triggered. Um, it took it took a miracle for, for her to... Uh, reprocess and when that happened by the way and again it was a process but there was a point a tipping point where the migraine stopped where she was able to be intimate with her husband again which where they were even able to to, uh, attempt to have children Um, it was a beautiful thing for me to see how God works uh, in in healing yes 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 And, and you know and that that is one of the major effects you know and i think back to the time again where i had been sexually abused one of the ways that you can see that you truly have you still have those effects of unforgiveness is that when you see that person you know either something rises up in you or you can't be around them or you know it's something there that just makes you feel like you want to get away from them and that's Um, how your your brain was created by god your brain was created to protect you from hurt Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so if it's still in there, if it's in that and, you, and your midbrain stores it up. So in, in case you see them or you hear something, you hear their voice, you hear somebody talk about them, you hear it, you see some whatever you walk into a neighborhood where they were or you in the room where they touched you and your brain goes boom and you go into a, a true fear cycle, fight, flight or freeze. It's how your brain was made. And it's a it's a sign that you haven't really access the, the spirits forgiving yet um, it's, it's not broken it's perfectly normal it's actually a, a cue for the holy spirit though right right and i remember being at a service and um they were talking about forgiveness and somehow the holy spirit just came upon me and i could not mm-hmm. stop crying yeah it was like a purging like the lord was just allowing yep. all of that stuff to be you know taken out and so now yeah. the, you know i've seen the person several times and nothing is nothing yep. there, there i go. love them you know and go. that's when you know the holy there spirit has really dealt with it and you said something that i love so much because sometimes in the body of Christ, and I don't know if you've come across this, but I sure you have as a pastor. We want to demonize everything, and everything isn't a demon. Everything is a, is a demonic attack. So true. You know? <laughs> but like you so said, true. it's some stuff so it comes from some of the effects from in our brain of how we store things. Oh yeah, it's how we're made, and, mm-hmm. and God God knows this, and that's why He made it in concert with the Spirit. So so yeah, and we have that yeah. yeah. And another area we deal with in online stuff is shame. We have these this critical inner voice. We all have it a little or a lot that keeps telling us we're broken or ugly or not good enough, mm-hmm. not righteous enough, not pure enough, not beautiful enough, whatever it is. We have that inner voice and it sounds like our voice typically. And um, so how do we apply? How do we get the Holy Spirit's voice uh, working in that system as well? It can be done. Yes, yes, yes. You know, why Why do you think, Bill, is so challenging that, you know, to forgive? Yeah, it's our brain primarily, I think, and bad teaching. But but let me go with our brain. <laughs> bad I think we're made that yeah. it's difficult to forgive because for protection purposes, right? I'm, I just finished publishing a, uh, a workbook for prisoners in jails and prisons uh, for forgiving. And, and in prison, 60% of the men in jails and prison in the United States are traumatized. And that's the same area of the brain that forgiveness needs to work out. So when, when, they, when, when a counselor or a Bible study teacher or chaplain says, hey, let's work on that process. When, you were, when that person abused you or touched you or, or beat you up or bullied you, whatever, let's, let's think back to that and then let's forgive them. Well, their brain re, re-triggers. It traumatizes them unaware. It makes it worse. So uh, real quick neuroscience, I won't, you know, it's not to make anybody brain scientists, so I'm going to oversimplify it. But when something bad happened the first time, a, a neural pathway is formed in my brain to, to get to get the the uh, the uh, watch out message from from mm-hmm. where, where my eyes see it or where I'm feeling it to, to the place in my brain that kicks into the fight or flight. So a pathway is formed 
Second time it happens, the pathway becomes a sidewalk. Third time it becomes a street. And if it happens over and over, chronic serial stuff, it can become a super highway. And then the brain actually starts right wrapping it with myelin sheaths so that it will never be wiped out accidentally, you know, like a program. Mm. So mm -hmm. we're loaded with these, uh, I call them brain burritos. Uh, where, and and it's just this the super highway for if if I get triggered whatever it is because I've been traumatized something happened I haven't dealt with it I didn't know how to deal with it, and and when I trigger it's going to kick into that fight or flight and rapidly and with power, uh, particularly people who've been traumatized people who've suffered who lived in violence their whole lives those type of things, um, so we have to go back and recognize that that our brain is designed that way and that burrito has to be unwrapped and and diminished. I don't know how to do that. God does. Right. And, and that's the Holy Spirit's resurrection work to actually start unwrapping that brain burrito so that when it triggers, it triggers less often and with less uh, dysregulation, emotional dysregulation. So so I can actually think through it going, you know what, that that person is really not here. My brain felt that person was here, but they're not. Right. Or that person has changed or that person is dead or that person or I've changed. Uh, so we, we can get my prefrontal cortex back in gear quicker. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes when that dysregulation happens, it takes three hours to get my prefrontal cortex back online. I'm, I'm not being reasonable. I'm just reacting. And it's normal. It's super normal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so it's hard to forgive. You, yeah. you can't just sit in a sermon and rationally go, yeah, that's, I should just choose to forgive that person. You know, it's, <laughs> right. it's like your brain, your prefrontal cortex is not hooked to that brain burrito. It doesn't have that capacity. Right, right. And, you know, so so how can we start the process of forgiving, um, understanding that that's there in the prefrontal cortex? God. <laughs> the, the, I mean, honestly, this is going to sound so simplistic is I have to recognize that I haven't forgiven and that's okay. My mm -hmm. brain is, is not working against me. It's working for me. It just doesn't know the difference. And God can make that happen. So I need to, in Luke 18, the parable of the, of what I call the magnanimous king and the boneheaded servant. <laughs> what the boneheaded servant did right the first time was he, he was in the presence of this magnanimous king who paid debts paid mm. all the debts by the way right right and then he left the presence of the magnanimous king and on his own he's a bonehead mm -hmm. he, he can't forgive that's that's mm -hmm. the moral of the the moral of the parable is not you have a choice christian to either be like the magnanimous king and choose to forgive or or the boneheaded servant and not forgive no 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 the moral of the story was this one boneheaded servant the one who had been forgiven so much if anybody could have paid it forward he would have and he didn't Mm -hmm. He couldn't because he's not the magnanimous king. So he, he needs well, to learn to it. run to the magnanimous <laughs> king with empty hands going, I can't forgive. I can't deal with this. I can't stop the triggering. God, wash like you, you experience in the service. Mm -hmm. Okay, God, I'm here. I can choose to forgive. I've tried that. Uh, you know, I've tried the 70 times seven. It isn't working for me. So, okay, God, wash me. And, and begin to unravel the, the brain burritos. The magnanimous king is pleased, pleased to have us run back to him in need. Mm -hmm. That's what he does. And uh, it's, it's miraculous when that happens. So our online event really just keeps pushing these hurt, wounded people who are desperately hurting. Their brain is have, have all these brain burritos that they can't do anything about. It's frustrating. They, they, many Christians feel ashamed because Jesus says clearly you're supposed to forgive a lot and they've tried and it seems like everybody else is doing it, but they can't. So they're broken. They're a disappointment to Jesus. And then they go into shame. They can't forgive themselves. So we, we're taking, we're inviting people like that to come back into the presence of the magnanimous King and to experience justice that comes from heaven, experience uh, a value that comes, you know, the, the person devalued you. Uh, touched you for harm. God's spirit can touch you for healing and resurrection. It's uh, the amazing. Let me give you examples. These are this is two hour results from people who've been through this thing. It's online. Who's who knew that something online could actually help? Um, <laughs> and and it, this does not replace counselors. This does not replace therapists. It mm -hmm. is like you said. It's a process, but it might be seen as a a, a a way to bust down some walls that have been frustrating people. 
Mm -hmm. So one two hour two hour trip through this thing, nine different teaching stations, very simple, easy, fun. 21% decrease to a desire to avoid the person who hurt them. 21% decrease. So wow. Um, you know, anyway, let me go to the next one. This is great. 38% increase in empathy and benevolence toward the person who hurt them. This is from the Holy Spirit. Right, right. 20% decrease in revenge, desire for revenge. 20%. And a 78% increase in their experience of actual justice in the courtroom of God. We actually, uh, Tiffany, give people a uh, spiritual trial before God. Oh, wow. Where they wow. can... Where they, where they see his eyes upon them, they feel honored, they feel loved, they feel adored, they feel hope that he's there's going to be eventual justice because he's the God of justice. We remind people of all of that. And they and we give them voice. We help them write down what they're feeling, what was taken, what it was worth. And and we let them hear God's gavel hit hit the, the days and say guilty and and it it's a it's a powerful, powerful spiritual trip for people. And then we give them a, a, a dinner with Jesus, uh, just to be reminded that they're still loved. And these things come out of just one pass through the, the, the forgiving path. We have had attempted murder victims healed. We've had rape victims. And by healed, nowhere near perfect, right? These are percentages. This is not 100, you know, this nobody has ever been healed until they die. Right, right. <laughs> but but moving, changing the trajectory from frustration and shame and guilt, uh, self, you know, beating yourself up to, to God loves me. And I'm actually feeling like I've had justice finally. Uh, justice is the big deal. Um, God himself said in, in Exodus 34, let me, you know this because you're a pastor, <laughs> but, but a lot of people forget this. As he passed in front of, of Moses, he said, the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion and sin. Wow, that sounds like Jesus to me. I love mm -hmm. that. We talk about that God, <laughs> but we forget the next section. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. Um, before God could forgive a single one of my sins and your sins, uh, there, Jesus had to die. There was a trial on the cross. Mm -hmm. There was justice. There is no justice in the in the mind or heart of God until there was a trial, until there was punishment, the death of Jesus on the cross. We have been asking, we Christians, if you're not a Christian, look, don't, don't listen to this. But if you're a Christian, <laughs> uh, we've been asking you to be more magnanimous than your God. We've been asking you to actually give up your right to justice. And God doesn't do that. So... That was the main thing I learned from this lady who who threw the, the chair through the, the window, got through the wall. Uh, I I she finally came back to church. I had pursued her and she was she was oh my gosh, it was just bubbling over. But she said, I was walking down the street, I was basically mocking you, Pastor Bill, and, and your message of God's love. And and all of a sudden I heard a click. I felt a click. I was a click? What what kind of click are you talking about? And then she held her hands out like justice scales and she said something happened and i felt this it was as if god took the justice made me feel that there was a trial and and that the person had suffered i went really and and i asked her i said so if that person was here and kneeling before you and had a gun what would you do first time i asked her that i i, I can't i can't use the words on a family program second time she said i look i don't like the guy uh, but I wouldn't shoot it. I went, oh my gosh, we are starting something fresh here. Mm -hmm. But the Holy Spirit had made her feel like she actually was given justice in the courtroom of God, which is the important one. And Tiffany, it's amazing. She was smiling. The <laughs> migraines were gone. I mean, I'm not saying this happens every time. It doesn't. Right, right. But going from, man, just a devastating total... I mean, her marriage was was in trouble to we want to have children and i forg i think i forgive this person but i don't want to see them so so refreshing and that's that's what we can do uh, but we start off with encouraging people to admit it and then run into the presence of god with empty hands and let the holy spirit do his resurrection thing that's that's amazing and just a testimony of what she had to go through in the process and the breakthrough that she's even started to begin or had oh yeah, um, oh, yeah. That, oh. that is amazing 
you know, oh, yeah. and while you were talking, I was just thinking about, you know, I had another situation um, in ministry as pastors. We have to continue to carry the heart of Jesus, even with forgiveness, because you have people come, you have people go. Uh, yep. You have so many other uh, gamuts of things that you have to deal with. People and I remember dealing with accused. Right. And I had a situation that happened like that. And I'm as a pastor, I was on. This was when I first started out and I was like really, really disappointed and hurt. And I had to tell the Lord, I said, Lord, you're going to have to help me to forgive and help me to go on because everything that happened wasn't true. And um, yep. it, it was just a whole lot. And it took me two weeks of prayer, praying, asking the Lord. But I told him, I don't want to have that unforgiveness in my heart. And it yeah. took two weeks. Um, but I kept giving it to Jesus. I said, you have to take this. You have to take this because we're always going to have to have people that we um, deal with, especially with, with those we shepherd. And so I told the Lord, I want to have your heart, a forgiving heart to be able to do that. So you have That's to beautiful. help me. You That's know? beautiful. Yep, but it took a beautiful. process. And like I said, it took me two weeks. It may take someone longer. And I don't judge, you know, how long it takes as long as we go through that process. But yep. for me, um, it, it, it took that. Um, and it's still, you still have issues that you have to come up, but yeah. you have to be reminded and ask the Holy Spirit That's to help great. you to continue to go through that process. Yeah. If pastors don't do what you just did and you, and you laid out so, so brilliantly, uh, they develop brain burritos. And so when the next person comes in and says something, they're going to mm -hmm. double trigger and, uh -huh. it's not, and it, it doesn't lead to reconciliation. It actually leads to burnout for the pastor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. And I then mean, distrust and you, and, oh. and, 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 you know, in ministry, you cannot, you, you cannot have that distrust because you can never be effective as you need to right. be to those right. that you're serving. Right. Um, and so right. it is, we, you know, we're on the front lines and you have to deal with that every day. There's always options, things out there that comes up and just praying, like you said, giving it to the father. That's one of the major things that you have to do. We have to tell people how. I mean, that's one of the things we pastors forget is, mm -hmm. you know, I know what you mean because you described it. Right. But, but from the pulpit, <laughs> if you say, well, you just need to turn it over to the Father, they're going, yeah. Mm -hmm. But how? You know, Yeah, how what you muscle do group is that? I, I mean, I don't even know where I can find it in my, in my midbrain. What's a burrito anyway? You know, it's, <laughs> right. we have to actually give people baby steps so that they can, they can actually do this without having a seminary degree. And, mm -hmm. and do it over and over and over and over and it, it can become a habit. So uh, that's one of the things we've tried to do is just to make it so ridiculously repeatable. So yeah. simple. We actually uh, makes this thing so if they, if they do the forgiving path, we give them 30 days. So we had one lady who was, oh, oh, the, emo the emotional abuse of this lady, by the way, and her, her father was a leading uh, evangelist. If I mentioned his name, you would, you would have heard right. of him. Yeah, right. That doesn't surprise anybody or your viewers, <laughs> right? But she was horribly, horribly abused. She went through this thing five times in one week. And, and each time her numbers got a little better, a little better, and a little better. She, she chilled a little bit more. Still, she'll need counseling probably until she gets to heaven. Mm -hmm. But she's much more at peace. Um, uh, you know, I mean, to put it from a doctor's standpoint, she's taking less antidepressants than she was. And wow. that's a win. I mm -hmm. mean, uh, th that's a win. This side of heaven, all creation groans, right? Yes, yes, yes. And, and you know, it's something that you said, Bill, and we'll take a commercial break in a minute, but mm -hmm. um, you were saying, you know, that's that, that may be something that she has to deal with, with counseling, you know, until mm -hmm. Jesus comes back. Yep. And um, going back to the point that we said that you mentioned earlier, I think before we got on, that, you know, the church is the one that has a hard time getting that right. You know, we want to force people um, to be able to, to just do it immediately, you know, yeah. and it, it's a process, you know, and the scripture yeah. tells us that, you know, Jesus says in order for us to forgive, if, he, if we want him to forgive us, you know, then we have to forgive. But I think what's great is through the forgiving path that you're trying, you're giving um, those that go through it, the tools that they need in order to go through that um, path. Seems to be working well. Yes, yes. So after the commercial break, we're going to talk a little bit about um, forgiving yourself, because I think that yeah. is a great, great, great uh, problem in the world today. You know, we, we can forgive others at times, but when it comes to ourselves, especially if you're a perfectionist, um, being able to forgive yourself. And so after the commercial break, we're going to talk about that. Thank you.
Wow, hello everyone. We are on commercial break. This has been such great information on forgiveness and learning about unforgiveness. And it's so much information that needs to be covered. So we're going to take a break and we're going to come back next week and talk again with episode two and finish out the subject with our interview with Bill on unforgiveness. So until next time, join us again. God bless. Thank you for listening to Tasty Tidbits with Dr. Tiffany Watkins. If you're enjoying the show, feel free to subscribe, rate, and share with your friends. To learn more about Dr. Tiffany, check out her blog on goodreads.com or visit her website at www.renewedfaithministriesinc.com. Until next time, stay blessed.